Michael Harding here from PPA. Welcome back to Connacht Club Rugby TV. This show is all about club rugby in Connacht and most importantly the players that play in it. This is episode 2 and we're going to get straight into the action again this week where Ballina travelled down to Dewberry Park to take on Buccaneers in the second round of the Connacht Senior League. On commentary this week for us is John Mulligan from Galway Bay FM. The game we're featuring this afternoon is a clash of Buccaneers and Ballina. Buccaneers beaten by Sligo first time out. Ballina, very good win against Corinthians. Look at the Buccaneers team. Sean O'Connell, Ronan Murray, Jared Fallon, Thomas McGann coming in from the bench. They get starts this weekend. And Shane Layden returns from an Achilles injury he picked up in October 2019. Ballina, their pack were excellent against the Galway side. Alex Carduff and Bradley Nealon coming into the team as well. And Ronan Malloy is moved to the wing for what is an important game for Balna. Kickoff, well, let's say not the greatest of all time, going straight into touch. And from the uh, scrum that was taken, this is an interesting Buccaneer side because they needed a good start to this game. Fed out to a bit of a grubber, to be very honest with you, but uh, picked up and cleared quite nicely from the Balna uh, back line and into touch. The line out well picked up by Buccaneers' uh, Rory Byrne. Buccaneers still holding on to possession. A couple of guys to watch out for in this game uh, would be the scrum half, in fact, for Ballina. And that is Keen Quinn, who stopped a break from Darren Brown from going any further. And the Ballina defence holding firm under a bit of Buccaneers' pressure in the early stages. The out wide ball looking for support. Bit of a breakdown. Shane Layden, probably first touch, a little bit forward though from the fullback, not like him. Balna line out, fed back out towards Quinn, looking for support, getting it from Mickey Murphy. And then a lovely little break from the number 12, Alex Corduff, who fed the on-running Ronan Malloy, who made no mistake. Zara White kicked the extras and Balna were seven points to the good. Buccaneers had to come back into this game and were very close on a couple of occasions. One opportunity there, though, knocked on and... Uh, the scrum found Quinn rather busy, maybe a little bit wide open, but did very well. The Balna pack, like we said, very good against Corinthians, holding the own and doing very nicely. Lovely break from Mark Feely, and uh, Feely's kick on, well, while it might not be winning any award, to still relieve the pressure for the Balana side. Buccaneers still tried to make a little bit of inroads and to try and maybe correct the mistakes that they had made against Sligo on the opening day. Another nice breakthrough this time from Fergus Gavin, creating the space for the scrum half, Jared Fallon, who in turn fed it out. And again, Buccaneers working their pack. The reason, of course, the boys were brought in was to add a little bit more meat to it. A lovely kick on. Aimed it for Ross Murphy Sweeney, but nothing doing. This time a line out, won by Ballina and a fantastic break from Luke Sweeney in the back row. He feeds out to Malloy. Malloy is not going to be caught from there bang try for Ballina their second of the afternoon White with the extras looking for the extra points but the flag stayed down telling its own story 12-0 up Ballina still in very good control and they are actually a team that maybe watched a lot good run here from their uh, winger Bradley Nealon on the halfway line Quinn against the four to the centre of a bit of a late challenge but he'll give it up to Mickey Murphy this is a guy who has made a big name for himself over the years especially as a junior inter provincial back out towards Quinn Ballina still pushing the envelope and uh, creating space for Quinn to feed the ball out wide the centres Corduff and uh, Callum Quinn have to get a special mention here for the work that they did throughout the 80 minutes but incredibly this time it was broken down and collected by Rory Byrne who won possession and gave Buccaneers a chance to create one of their own feeding this one out though towards McGann who had Leighton on his outside McGann going to ground good support especially from hooker Darren Brown still holding it and it is into the hands of Michael Hanley who had a very good game against Sligo Hanley losing possession but the referee deeming that there was something illegal the advantage been given it's been fed out once again though. and again it's number seven this time it's Evan Galvin who has the ball and makes waves for Buccaneers fed back out good ball out towards the out half out towards the centre and there's Leighton and a great pass out this time towards their winger Ross Murphy Sweeney who is taken to ground support 
not forthcoming and the penalty goes towards Balaná. This time it's a Balaná line out picked up very nicely by their prop that's Shane Clark and fed out towards the wing Murphy giving the ball beautiful pass actually from Murphy towards Daniel Malloy Malloy taking a couple of challenges creating space here comes Quinn Quinn has support outside him gives it uh, towards uh, Thomas Hannigan another player with promise back out towards Quinn again and then it was Cordoff again Cordoff creating the space creating the group back out towards Quinn great pass from Billy McVan that was out towards uh, their number four Mark Feely but nothing came from it Balna again in position they're still 12 points up remember and a brilliant break this time by Callum Quinn a good 30-40 yards of a break and then Malloy brilliant pass and he feeds it in and Mickey Murphy doing like he had done many times for the juniors getting the score with Dar White kicking the extras Balna now 19 points to nil up and Buccaneers knowing that they had some work to do still wasn't even half time now we moved into the second half and it is Buccaneers who have possession the man with the possession is their hooker Darren Brown great drive from the Buccaneers pack many felt that they've worked on got the penalty advantage Brown goes to ground feeds it back out wide and here's an opportunity for them Leighton looking for the position the grubber kick goes on but well tidied up by the Ballina back line line out for Buccaneers this time again Brown the man with the possession and uh, doing quite well referee says we'll let it go Brown holds on to the ball and gets in for the try a well taken try the extras from Hanley are good and it's now 19-7 in favour of Balaná Balaná may be a little bit sketchy in this particular run of play but they have an amazing support line with Quinn at scrum half having to come in for special mention I know I've mentioned him several times but he seems to be at the centre of nearly everything that Balaná did in the opening 50-60 minutes and here he is again great ball back out again Mickey Murphy support given and it is their number 13 Callum Quinn another player with talent who collects and uh, while uh, Quinn was thinking that uh, they went wrong it did but here comes the play that followed immediately afterwards and Mickey Murphy gets the try converted by uh, Darrell White and it's 26 points to 7 in favour of Ballina Buccaneers has possession trying to drive their way forward it's their number 7 this time Evan Galvin who tries to create something of note great ball out though a wonderful pass out to the centre maybe looking a little bit forward referee says no it is a try and it's a try for Buccaneers the kick from Hanley is unfortunately not successful and that's the way it went there was an instant towards the end maybe a bit of a sour note uh, in the ending of this particular game a late challenge that the referee deemed was a red card was very quick to note okay you could say six of one half a dozen of the other and to be fair to Callum Quinn he was committed but the decision was red not a matter to Balaná they are the winners 26 points to Buccaneers 12 thanks very much for that John um we look here now at our match report. A couple of numbers jump off the page here for me. Buccaneers firstly had 60% possession of the ball, which was huge. Um, with that, though, they only created two line breaks versus the seven line breaks Balaná created. Balaná had 11 lineouts in the game, but only won six, and some of those weren't one clean. So an area there for Balaná to tidy up. But some of their first phase play off their scrums and lineout again this week was really good, uh, as, as it was against Corinthians the week before. As we look on to our second game now of the week, uh, Sligo travelled down to Crowley Park to take on Weegens on their first day out. On commentary is Paul O'Kelly from the Second Row Podcast. After a bye week in round one, Galwegians got their Cox Senior League campaign underway as they hosted Sligo on Saturday. Galwegians had a real experience in the second row as Casper Palamker makes his debut as he partners own Tarmy, who has more senior caps than the rest of his team combined. Also making their first starts for Galwegians are Brian McSweeney and Dara Kennedy. Kieran Downing leads the team as club captain. Sligo name a practically unchanged side from last week's 43-10 win over Buccaneers, with former Brazilian international and current Sligo women's coach Guilherme Coghetto starting at fullback, with Sean Wynn, who was fullback last week, now playing at seven. With the win behind them, Galwegians get the game underway. Rob Holian gathers for Sligo, marched upfield, and he's met well by the Galwegians defence. Sligo protect the ball well, the, they get the extra numbers in there for their caterpillar rook, and Brendan Cunningham, with the box kick, clears downfield. O'Shotney races upfield to underneath it. He collects cleanly and gets on the front foot. The ball is clean, and as Brown gets to the ruck, the Sligo defence go offside, and Galway just have the advantage. They keep the ball moving in field. 
really strong carries. And they've got earned themselves a second advantage. They bring out the wall wide. Loopy bought pass over the top. And the ref calls us back for that second penalty. Galway is some real intent to play here. Marker lines it up. But the ball just drifts right and wide. It's a scrum to Galwegians inside their own 10 meter line. And, and Brown feeds it in. Galwegian likes to put width on the ball. And the ball gets out to Kennedy. Who, after a quick fumble, gathers it up. He makes way upfield, but it's halt ground. Brown can get the ball away quickly to Downey. He pops up to Cunningham. Cunningham takes forward, gives a step, steps through the slide of the fence, and he's running downfield. The cover won't get there to him. What a break, and he's over for the try. That was a great bit of skill by Cunningham. But Earl doesn't add the conversion. Another scrum for Galwegians inside their own half. Brown feeds, and they look to go wide again. Kelly out to Kennedy, but they don't have the same space to work on as before. Ball gets out, but they tidy up nicely. Brown moves the ball in field. Sligo come up, make their tackles. Brown there once again. Brings the ball in field. Good flat pass. And Galway just through the Sligo defence after a great offload. Galway just halt the ground, but they protect the ball. Slows down a bit, but Galway just still in possession. They come in field, good carry, but Sligo making their tackles. Goings come across the back line. Every time they're tackled, they're making those yards after contact. The ball spread out. But once again, Sligo making their tackles. And Ender Gavin's over that ball, and he wins the penalty for Sligo. That'll give the Sligo defence a much-needed boost after conceding that early score. It's a Sligo line-out deep in the Connacht 22. Galwegians don't compete and Sligo have clean ball and they work their way in field. The ball is spread out wide ends up in the hands of Kogeto who steps inside the, the Galwegians defence but is brought to ground. Sligo passes the ball inside but Galwegians make their tackle. This is a really slow ruck ball as Galwegians look to compete. They come up with the ball but illegally so, according to Nathan Kearns. Ewan Brown steps up, and he gets Sligo's first point to the game. It's a Sligo scrum, and Cunningham feeds in. Both packs going hard at it. Go away to get a slight shove, but that turn favours Sligo. Cunningham gets the ball out away to Brown. The ball moves across the back line. Cogetto dances inside the defences, but lovely offload there to keep the ball alive. A strong Sligo carry to reset. And another pick and go just to move the defence back a bit. The ball gets spread in field. Galwegians make their tackles and Sligo protect the ball well. Ball's played out. In behind. Fours and backs linking up really well. And there's the break downfield. Steps through the first tackle. And it takes two to get him to ground near the, the Galwegians 22. Sligo don't mess around. Loose ball and they run down the blind side. Ball's fed in field. And that's a huge carry by Hickey. Who then gives the offload. Then another strong carry. Advantage now for Sligo. They spread the ball wide. But Galwegians compete on the ground. And we're back for the original penalty. Brown puts Sligo ahead 6 points to 5. The second half, Sligo in possession. Then they carry in field. Cunningham feeds the ball to Holian. Carries the ball up and Galwegians make their, make their tackles in midfield. Cunningham again. Feeds the ball back to Keegan. What a kick downfield. That's the first 50-22 of the season. Early throws in the line out for Sligo. Once again, Galway just looking to disrupt them all and not competing in the air. Sligo turn through the Galway's events, but eventually go to ground. It's all a bit messy, but Sligo still have the ball. Keeping it tight as they reset their attack. A 
good strong carry gives him a clean ball. Ball's fed inside and another strong carry there, inching towards the try line. It's Cunningham ordering his troops. And that's another good carry. They're making their way towards the posts. Cunningham, hands on the ball. Go agents up in defense very well, making their tackles. The cycle back line drift over, seeing space, but not seen by Cunningham, and he feeds the ball inside. But Sligo still in possession. They work their way back towards the posts. And a great pick and go, inching their way towards the Galwegian's try line. Cunningham, infield. Is that a high tackle? Yes, it is. The arm's out for advantage. Cunningham, out to Kageto. Drawn pass. And Gian Tomer's over the line. What a try. Sligo, really patient in their build-up. And out to Kageto with a great drawn pass to create the space for Gian Tomo, who went over. Galwegian with the restart. Holian comes forward to gather. He breaks in field, skips one tackle, two tackles, three tackles. He's eventually hauled to ground, but what an offload. It's offloaded again. Sligo streaming upfield. In offload inside. And the ball's kept alive. Win pops off to O'Hare, who gets over the line for the try. That is two tries in a matter of minutes. Sligo are well on top now at this stage. Go Regents looking to exit. And box kick clear. The ball holds up in the air a small bit. And Sligo sp spread the ball wide. Kageto spreads it out to Carter. He steps inside one tackle. Inside another tackle. He gives it side to Giantomo. He pops off to Brown. Brown breaks in 22. Draws the last defender. And gives the ball out to Gavin. Who dives over the line. That's another great try from the Sligo men. But Galwegians won't be happy with their exit or their defence there. Sligo in possession in the Galwegian's half. Cunningham feeds the ball inside. And a good carry gets them over the 10 metre line. Well, it's clean ball. Cunningham once again feeds the ball inside. Galwegian's making their tackles. Slowing the ball down slightly. But Cunningham can see it there. He sees the gap and he's through. What a break by Cunningham. He rides a tackle. Gives the ball to Giantomo who somehow holds on. And he breaks down the line. What a try. Great vision by Cunningham to spot the pillar defender not there. And great support by Jan Tomo to be off his shoulder. And Brown adds the extra two points. It's a Galwegian scrum. They break in field. They pass across the back line. The ball's gone to Kennedy. Kennedy hands off the defender. Steps inside. Makes way to try line. What a wonderful score. That all looks like it came from a slip in the Sligo defence early on. But Galwegians won't mind. That was a great finish from by Kennedy from his own half. But, and the, but the conversion is missed. Galwegian as 10 metre, Brian Brown gives the ball out. The ball goes across the back line. Good break. That offload seemed unnecessary. Sligo now have the ball. And Sligo look to clean up the ruck as Galwegians compete. Cunning with the ball. Show and go. He breaks through the cover. On to Brown. Brown darts upfield. Holds up, holds onto the ball. Draws the defence. And he gives it last second to Kogetto, who places the ball down for a try. That was another ruthless counterattack from Sligo. As Brown adds the extras. Galwegians are set to clear. And Brown with the box kick. It drifts in field. Brown collects. And he gives it out to Kogeto. Kogeto brings it forward. He gives it to Giantomo. He passes over the top. Hint to a forward pass there. But we play on. Sligo make their way into the Galwegians 22. It's a bit slightly slow. But that's a strong carry. And they... And they have quick ball again. Another strong carry as they make their way into the posts. But more importantly, the ball is clean. Ball comes out. Brown. Out to Kogeto. He makes a break. He spots that gap. Around the cover defence. And he's down. And he dots down for the final try of the game. That's the second of the week in a row. Slag have put 40 plus on their opposition. That's come away. 42 10 victors in Crowley Park. Thanks very much for that, Porig. Uh, we're going to have a look again here at our match report. Um, Sligo had a massive 66% possession, and most of that possession was built in the in the second half. Most of the possession Weegians had in that second half was uh, actually exiting. When Sligo did kick, they really did pin um, uh, got Weegians back very well. Um, again, like every game so far, the team with the most line breaks have won. Sligo's eight line breaks to Galwegians three. Four of Sligo's tries came off return and kick, so that's interesting. Um, just after the game, Aaron Tanzi from 
elite sports video caught up for a few words with uh, Simon Gavin, the Sligo head senior coach. Um, in advance, apologies for the wind in the video. Hi everyone, uh, we're here with uh, Simon Gavin, a uh, Sligo coach. And Simon, another convincing win again this week. Yeah, no, we're good. It's, uh, we're happy with the way the league started. Two good wins. Uh, boys had to work a lot harder today. It was quite physical, especially in the first 20 minutes. We absorbed a lot, but uh, we stuck to our structures and our patterns and we absorbed it and came back strong in the second half, a bit like last week, really. Yeah, second half really seems to be where we turn it on. Uh, I think uh, fitness is a big thing. Sure. Yeah, be uh, adduced to our uh, S&C coaches, we probably started training a little bit earlier than uh, other clubs. Um, so, you know, we've got that behind us and I keep saying, you know, if we're going to get benefit of it, we have to get it now because other clubs will start catching up, you know, and we'll be working hard on, uh, on Tuesdays. So we are benefiting right now, but, you know, we've got to keep working our game as well because other clubs will benefit it. Yeah, perfect. And just uh, your thoughts on what I, I know it's a short season, but that is uh, third try of ours, uh, the try of the season so far. Oh, the old days. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> but what can you say? You know, you can't defend against that. Line breaks and all loads like that. You know, you, 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 you just can't. You've got no answer to it, really. You know, a couple of nice balls, a couple of decent carries, and um, you had to get under the, and over the line like that was great. Yeah, and now we're uh, so bye for Sligo this week. And uh, do you any plans for the lads? Uh, we're going to have a little bit of a break, uh, just as a reward. Um, so we'll have no training this week. Uh, regroup, get over our knocks, and um, look forward to the Ballina match next week. But you know, we're looking forward to it. We'll see you by the start we've got so far. That's perfect, Simon. Thanks very much, and congratulations. Thank you. Thanks very much for Aaron for doing that interview for us. Um, so we're going to move on now to our individual player performances of the weekend. So first up here, you can see Mark Feely, the second row for Ballina. Mark had three carries in the game. Um, two of those led to line breaks. It's some very good carrying, uh, good footwork here before contact offloading the ball. In defence, he had no missed tackles. Um, Made five tackles, I believe three of those five were, were solid chop tackles as well. There was maybe one soak tackle there. His uh, rook involvement was at two. Mark didn't play the whole game. Mark went off uh, early in the second half. But um, Mark took two really good lineups, as we spoke about earlier. The, the ball in that lineup wasn't at its best, so two really nice takes there, delivered down to nine. And here, what is a good attack in lineup for Buccaneers, Mark gets up, contests, gets down, and breaks up the mall. But I suppose the main reason for giving Mark the award this week in terms of this game was this penalty he won here led to the first try for Ballina at a crucial stage. And he gets in here and he wins another big penalty for Ballina. The second player from this game is, is Shane Layden from Buccaneers. Um, as John mentioned, Shane is just after returning from um, an Achilles injury which kept him out since October 2019. Shane had some really good kicks in the game. The first one was to pin back re Ballina really well back there. This was a an interesting exit kick and um, almost got the ball back and this is a beautiful kick into the corner once again pinning Ballina back when the game is still very much a contest um, in terms of Shane's handling um, Shane had three passes in the game and four offloads and he also had eight carries so eight of those carries he got four offloads away and what I really liked about what Shane done was is how hard he fought in all his carries you can see there's a double second third movement here and especially this one the Shane fighting for every inch and meter here in this carry as well like it's absolutely phenomenal stuff um as i say some of his passing and handling was very good as well and he almost almost put guys away for a couple of tries this is one i suppose good cover in defense uh by balna here's another one just thomas mcgann gets just tackled into touch here after a great offload and and then this one led to i think buccaneer's second try once again committing two players Really good offload. And another one of his off, huge offload here coming out to Ross Murphy Sweeney. And if you look carefully, you'll see Shane is one of the first guys into the ruck here. So that was, that was one of two sh of Shane Layden's ruck involvements. So if anyone knows Shane, you know that's his uh, ruck quote and outfield for the year. Well done, Shane. Great game. Um, as we move on to the other game, uh, Rob Hoolian, um was, a kinda, was the man of the match here for me in this game. Rob only played... Uh, 52 minutes in this game as well, like Mark. But um, when he was on the pitch, uh, he uh, 
Sligo had six lineouts. He called five of them on the, and himself, and he and he won all five. And the one he didn't call on himself, I think Sligo. I think that was a a very unclean ball won by Sligo. Um, his rock involvements were seven. He had five tackles met in the game, but I think where he really caused Galwege's most trouble was with his carrying. Some really, really good outside outside carrying here. He always looks to get to the second man. And from his um from his nine eleven carries, he had a couple of line breaks, but also he created two penalties from the carries he met, which was a huge impact on the game. And I suppose his two biggest carries of the game is this one here with just huge leg fights, huge pump, and doesn't quite get the offload to hand, but Sligo retained the ball here. And then this last one, which which led to what was an absolutely wonderful try. Some people may question the defence from um, Colwegians, but but Rob broke four tackles there. It was, it was really, really massive carry. Line break, actually. And lastly, we have Dara Kennedy from Galwegians. Dara had six carries in the game. He had, uh, I think, two line, one line break. He made five tacks. He kicked the ball really well once as well down the pitch. Um, just some of his carries were really, really, really good. Um, once again, a, a lot like Declan O'Loughlin last year, what, last weekend again for, for Corinthians, where he wasn't working off a lot of clean ball, but was making good yards and constantly, constantly, anytime he got the ball like here, he was really getting his team on the front foot. And here, like I said, he made five tackles and four of his tackles were like that, coming off his wing, closing it down. Again here, another one, coming off the wing, closing down the space. Really good covering tackle here. Just get the man to ground, getting his job done. He swapped in and out of full back a couple of times with Conor Shocknessy. And here is um the only real involvement he had in the second half in terms of ball in hand. And like that's an incredible handoff. Step to the outside shoulder and break the line. Great try. Lastly, now we're going to round up the junior results from the weekend. So in the Curly Cup, Pool 1, Ballyhonas had a home win against Loch Ray. Corinthian seconds, lost at home to Ballon Row, while Boys Club lost at home to Tune seconds. In pool three, Ballina Slow lost at home to Corrug. Corinthians thirds had a big win against Ballina seconds, and on Friday night in the Cawley Cup, Buccaneers seconds beat Monavay 15-11. Thanks very much for listening to episode two. Please share it, and I hope I'll see you back in two weeks. Thank you.